Hi, I'm Luke Shervell. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today, I'm with Jeff Lee. He's the head of product development at Felix. It's F-I-I-L-E-X, mm -hmm. but you say Felix. We're here just for a simple reason, and that is um, I was given a call, and they said, hey, we've got this light coming out soon. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you'd like to come and check it out. And they gave me the specs on it, which was like in the 800 range. And I thought, mm -hmm. like, you know what? That's what I've been waiting for. So uh, really eager to see how this actually lines up with uh, the units we normally use. Mm -hmm. And any kind of basics you can tell me about it uh, just uh, before we, we yeah. check it out? Yeah, so I mean, thanks Luke. We're very happy to have you here and <laughs> we're happy to you know, give you a preview of our light. And so um, this unit, we're calling it the MAG 4K. So the 4K is basically because it's you know, roughly a 4K tungsten equivalent. Okay. Um, that being said, this is an LED unit. It is a, um, it's a tunable white, so it is a continuous 2800 to 6500 Kelvin CCT tunable. And because it's LED, it's also dimmable. And then you also get the usual benefits of being lightweight and things like that. And so when we designed this product, actually, it was actually sort of an evolution of a previous product that we had, ah. um, which is actually from our, our a totally different um, lighting brand that our company has, which is um, it's an aquarium lighting brand. Oh. And we actually used the light engine um, to basically shine shafts of light down large kelp forests in big public aquariums. Wow. And uh, basically about a year ago at NAB, uh, I was chatting with um, our VP of sales marketing, Brian. He's like, man, we really have to just change the spectrum, get this from being like a basically a what we call like a a deep ocean blue spectrum to something uh -huh. that you can actually illuminate people with. Um, right. So something in the daylight range or even better tunable. And so we, in a very short amount of time, took kind of the, the essence of that light engine and made a tunable white spectrum out of that and then made it a Felix product by, you know, adding DMX and all the necessary controls and things like that. Wow. And so you did that in a year? Uh, so credit to the team. I mean, we've been working yeah. on this light source for several years, yeah. um, but really taking that light engine, it's like, it's like a big motor basically, I'm just putting it in a Felix body, and then wow. kind of working like, that's about a year, yeah. And so we're happy to show you the, what we're calling the first edition Mag 4K. Awesome, okay. Well, uh, for starters, why don't we, um, we'll throw up the M8, and we're just shooting against white, it'll probably be a little wider than, than the 10 foot white we've got. And then uh, we'll measure that at 10 feet to the background. We'll compare that to the Mag 4K. So we'll turn this guy on, and this is just a regular Airy M8. We can go through spot flood, and, um, so, and this is not really a spot flood unit, right? Right, yeah. So, so in this case, it would be, I mean, it's, it's sort of, right now this is kind of the bare, so it's kind of the bare LEDs right now. Um, this is about 100 or so degrees wide, um, but then we have a lot of different accessories like reflectors and then also the leak and things like that we can put onto it to... You know, cool. So there's a ellipsoidal adapter for that's this. That's right, yeah. And, and so from doors to ellipsoidal, so that's a lot like uh, a joker. Very much but so, But yeah. we'll just do uh, output-wise against the M8, and then maybe we'll bring the Jolico in and compare that to sure. the yeah. uh, ellipsoidal version. Okay. Yeah. This is coming up to speed. Let me get the uh, meter up to speed. And we'll make sure this is in, okay, so that's full flood mode at 10 feet. And so foot candles wise, I'm at 270, 270 in the center. Okay, so that's the, the beef of that. And then why don't we just go to spot. Spot, 10 feet, we've got, uh, well, I had 2,000 for a minute there. Yep, 2,000 foot candles. Okay, uh, then maybe we'll go halfway. So 950 is the, the hottest there. So that gives us an idea, just raw output. Mm -hmm. Hadn't seen this light before, but <laughs> uh, pulled out the uh, Blackout uh, iPad app mm -hmm. and hooked it up to the AKS, just put a little uh, Cinelex uh, on the back of the, uh, the unit, and we were able to use uh, a Felix yep. setup, but mm -hmm. for a different unit because yeah. this isn't out yet, yeah. and uh, it came right up. Right. I'll bring that up. That'll be at full there, and then we'll turn this guy off. And so now this is at full at 
5600. Mm -hmm. I didn't really measure that color wise, but mm -hmm. and so this is just raw without any right. kind of without any kind of lensing. Right. This is but what's interesting here is real nice hard shadow. Yeah. Turn this on again. So that's 110 foot candles there. Well, that's interesting. It's actually it stays that same intensity mm -hmm. for a much farther field. Yeah. So than, than the other one. So I mean that's very much like what we wanted to do is and when we're designing the optics. So it's it's about getting a nice uniform large spread when mm -hmm. you're doing a bear, right? And so um, we put a lot of effort into it, trying to make it not have a hot spot of any sort. And so typically with a lot of these kind of reflector styles and things like that, you will tend to have more of a hot spot. Um, in, a bear, in a bear, it should be open wash, bear right. bulb kind of look, yeah. And, and so, so, and you're saying that this It field, carries that intensity for a large angle. Like even here, like earlier, we would probably see the cutoff, even without the barn doors, probably where your foot is right there. Right. Nice, nice shoes. And then uh, <laughs> on this one, we're probably, you know, this is probably another at least 10, 10 degrees wider than that. Too. And so overall, this is what would you say it was? It's about a hundred, about a hundred degrees. Yeah. Hundred degrees. About hundred degrees. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, and then getting that hard shadow. Yeah, I mean here, I mean at a hundred, yeah, hundred uh, foot candles, just under. Yeah. And uh, and here, hundred, yeah, hundred. Yeah. So, okay. So it's very much like the area that you can use is very usable. There's just no hot spot. Right. And uh, and again, going back to that single shadow, it's it's because it's a single source, and so. Oh. You don't get the multi-shadow. Yeah. That, that's impressive, yeah. Because you have a hard light, you want to be able to shape it, and so the ability to use these barn doors to cut it is very useful. So you can come in quite tight, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's, it's close, so it's soft, yeah. but the fact that you can do that. Right. Uh, okay. Cool. And, and then... So, so um, we have three different reflectors. There's a 60 degree, a 27, and also an 18 degree. Okay. Um, so if you think about kind of those, those would be the beam angles. Um, what this equates to in terms of the center intensity of the center lux is roughly like if that was a 1x, this would be like a 2x, a 5x, and almost a 10x on that. Okay. So if you're thinking about power. So you're getting more output. Yes. A smaller, it'd be a smaller area, yep. but it would be more output. All yes. right. Well, let's, let's check them out. Yeah. And uh, do you want to turn the light off? Uh, well, it, the nice thing is that it's going to be, it's going to run really cool. And as long as we don't blind ourselves, we can, it's, it's not too much heat. So it's just a barrel nice. on a little lock. Okay. As you can see how it tightened it up a bit. Yep. And, uh, am I actually going to get more output here? Yes. Yeah. So now I'm getting, uh, 190 to 200. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just has a little, it's pretty good though. Uh, okay. And then next one up. So that's 60. Yes. And this would be 27. Excuse me. This would be the 27. Look. Okay. So now we're getting a little spottier. For sure. And there we've got 440 foot candles. Oh, Just yeah. a release here. Just a turn. <laughs> Lock. Okay. Oh yeah. So that's that's pretty spotty right there. Yeah. 950 seems to be the ticket. And um, that's nice if you're smacking into a reflector or right. something like that, and you just need to get it to uh, a certain small area. However, if we put the ellipsoidal front on it, mm. so much the better. Why don't we, we'll turn this off and we'll go to the 800 Yolico. You guys are the first ones to see the prototype of the Lico. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Optimized beam. 50 degree. So if we do that, yeah, 640 in the center. Pretty nice mm -hmm. even beam. I guess it gets a little reddish on the outside. And we'll turn this guy off. 
So let's get it, see how sharp we can get it. All right, so do we not get as uh, crisp on the outside? So the focusing is a little bit different. Um, that's why okay. like we usually like to run this with the, uh, the, the iris. Um, oh, okay. Because if you think about what's happening on the bulb, on the Lico, like it, the bulb is actually sitting inside, like in, inside of the right. housing. Right. So the lens has that distance. But in our case, we're actually further back. You're further back, yeah. And so we're not actually not, but that's why uh, our final version of this is gonna have to have some optics to sort of take the light kind of basically put it in a different focal plane, if you will. Right, okay, so you're still working on, on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the concept is really to have an adapter that allows people to use all of the, you know, the leakers right. that everyone has, so. Right, right, okay. But you can see how like the, where the placement of the light sources matters a lot because we're, we're doing lensing. Totally, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. But you're still gonna work with existing that's right. uh, ellipsoidal. Yeah, uh, that, that's right. That's cool. Uh, okay, so just for yucks, even though this isn't a final 220 in the center, and then, you know, 100 here. Yeah, okay. All right, so yeah, TBD. TBD. But um, pretty cool that we have that kind of unit output mm -hmm. uh, with, um, with existing barrels, mm -hmm. which is, is awesome, uh, sort of the Jolico yeah. approach. Yeah. Uh, cool, and then just um, listening this. And yeah. Now, and then just for yucks, uh, just so you can see it, hmm. putting a pattern in. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, there's a slot. There you go. I mean, you know, that's nice. Because, hmm. uh, I mean, usually you don't have them sharp anyway. But uh, you don't have a lot of color aberration necessarily. Right. You just have a sort of a. Uh, There's a little bit of a ghost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, here at the 50 degree, because we have that that bulb jammed in mm -hmm. further into the uh, barrel, we're right. getting a, a wider uh, mm -hmm. lensing, and then if we put this guy in. And we focus that up. That's pretty clean. Yeah. And then if we fuzz it a little bit, then you get a similar kind of a ghosting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously a little more intensity and all. Right. But um, let me just see one more thing. Turn this off. So if we went to 32, say, mm -hmm. then there you go. And, and obviously that's something you'd have to do with, with uh, gel uh, on the Jolico. So pretty nice to be able to do that. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thanks You're for uh, giving us a, a, a little preview of mm -hmm. things to come. And I know there's probably some tweaking to be done. This mm -hmm. is first iteration. But uh, pretty exciting to mm -hmm. see something that has that kind of output, mm -hmm. that uh, kind of tunability mm -hmm. and uh, dimmability and, and all that in uh, a, a pretty good, um, you know, nice compact yeah. uh, form factor. So, so 20, 27 pounds roughly as is and a built-in power supply and everything too. So no extra battery pack. Yeah, no extra thing. Yeah, yeah that's just uh, plug-in power and, and away you go. Yeah. Okay, this is a little awkward, but I have to throw in a disclaimer here. Because all the foot candle readings that I was calling out, those don't line up with the manufacturers. So in both cases, Felix and Airy, if you look at their literature, quite different. Uh, my numbers are low. So uh, relative to each other, totally fine. You know, so it gives you an idea of how the lights stack up next to each other. But for actual numbers, go to their literature. All right. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Thanks for uh, having me, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Thank you. It may just be me, but I think the best comparison would be with an airy orbiter. So earlier we were running this uh, 
using the uh, the sky node off the DMX and the five volt power, but um, we also have a hardwired remote. And so in this case, this is essentially an RJ45 or a Cat6 cable that goes from remote to this, which is and, and you can just turn off DMX yeah. and go to remote. It's just a quick toggle switch. Yeah, cool. Really simple, yeah. Nice. And so this will allow me to basically do a 50 foot run on that. You can um, have all this. Yeah, basically. Yeah, or and whatever. So, uh, you know, in the case where it ends up going up on a taller stand, or let's say it's just in a remote place, and you just don't have access to something like wireless, then something like this would be very, very useful to do because then you can adjust the CCT and then also the intensity from a remote. Boom. Yeah. Nice. And it has a handy little dock. Yeah. And if you lose the cable, it's just a Cat6. So right. We thought about that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. When I was coming up in, in the business, the gaffers I worked for, some of them would have two identical meters. And so if one was seeming a little off, they'd pull out the other one for a second opinion. And they were often analog. This is, you know, and they were Spectras. Uh, this is a digital version of the Spectra. I had it with me, but I didn't pull it out. And I didn't do my sort of due diligence of having the literature in front of me to check it against the readings I was taking. We were trying to get through it quickly, all those kinds of things. But still, uh, you know, word to the wise, have a backup. Do, do your homework. And so, yeah, I'll be doing that in the future.